What's up guys, let's take a brief look to see what it's like to save somebody's life in interventional radiology. All right, so let's take a quick glimpse into the world of interventional radiology with an actual case. So with this case that I'm gonna go over, this is a 69 year old gentleman who recently came off of a long flight. It was about a seven hour flight. After the flight, he went to a store to pick up some food. And while he was there, he started feeling some chest pain started feeling short of breath, and he actually collapsed, and that's what brought him over to the hospital. So now, him being short of breath, complaining of chest pain, almost everybody that walks into the emergency department usually gets at least a screening x-ray. So this is the chest x-ray here. If we take a look at this x-ray, you know, basics of x-rays, you know, lungs which are air-filled are dark, things that are more dense are white, the brightest things here that we see are bones, and then these are overlapping soft tissues. Here's the heart. Here's the right side of the heart, here's the left side of the heart. And if you take a look at this x-ray here, pretty much looks normal. We don't really see anything going on with the x-ray. But of course, given the fact that he was recently on a flight and he's short of breath, he was hypoxic, complaining of chest pain, his blood pressure was starting to become low, the suspicion was high that maybe he has something called a pulmonary embolism. And essentially what that is, is that it's a clot involving one of the large vessels that comes off of your heart. Now, if you have to remember that the heart basically is the pump of the body. So all of the blood of the body passes through the heart. So the heart pumps the blood into the lungs. That's where the blood collects oxygen and then it goes over to the rest of the body. So taking a look at this CAT scan here, we'll get you oriented. This is the right side of the patient. This is the left side of the patient. This is the right side of the heart. This is the left side of the heart. Normally blood uh, comes across here into the right side of the heart, goes into this chamber here, and this chamber then pumps it through this very large vessel here, the pulmonary artery, and it pumps it over into the lungs. So there's two pulmonary arteries. There's a right side pulmonary artery, main pulmonary artery, and there's a left main pulmonary artery. So right here, if you take a look here, all this bright signal that you're seeing into the chambers of the heart, this is because contrast was given via a vein. So the contrast was given into the blood and that's what gives it this bright and this bright attenuation on CT. So if we take a look, as we're following this vessel here, we see that now it's pumping into these structures here, which is the lungs. We see this big glob here. And if you follow it, the glob sort of starts to, it also extends further. So we have further branches here as well. And if we look on the other side, remember there's two main pulmonary arteries. We take a look at the left side, we also see some dark signal here. So basically this person has quite a decent sized pulmonary embolism, quite a decent sized clot burden. And this for sure is life threatening because what happens is that now, if you have the heart unable to pump, you start to create unnecessary pressure on this heart and that causes the heart to work more and you can actually cause the heart to fail. Not only that, if you're not able to get oxygen to your blood and you're not able to oxygenate your blood, the rest of the organs which are dependent on that blood and dependent on getting the oxygen from that blood are not able to be perfused. So overall, this is a recipe for disaster. Pulmonary embolism is a common cause of death in the hospital, unfortunately. And you know, up until not too long ago, there was limited options on what you can do. You can essentially thin out the blood entirely and hope that your body naturally breaks this clot apart and you, know, you survive. In the meantime, you're under you know, ICU conditions and you're getting supplemental support. Or what you can do is you can also take a small device, get the device up in here, and you can actually give local medicine, small doses for maybe like 12 hours or maybe 24 hours. You can try to give medicine that can break up this clot. Essentially, your goal is that you want this clot here to get broken up and go into the more distal, smaller branches of the lungs, because then your, your lungs can still oxygenate a decent amount of blood so your organs can still be perfused, because that's the main goal here. You wanna make sure that your organs are perfused. But it wasn't up until not too long ago where there's other devices. So essentially, this patient got referred to the ICU, of course. This patient was very low blood pressure. His heart was already starting to go into failure. And he also had very low oxygen. So he was very high risk of mortality. And he got referred to interventional radiology. And some of the things that we can do, and what actually happened in this case, is we actually get a device that goes in through the neck and follows the vessels follows the vessels all the way from, from the top. So it comes in essentially through one of, the, one of the big vessels in the neck. We gain access into the heart. 
we actually gain access here, go across into the second chamber of the heart, and we basically cut across here, and we get a device in here, and we try to actually physically remove this clot. You can either mechanically break up the clot and then suck it out like a vacuum, or we can just try to aspirate it or suck it out and remove the clot. So essentially that's what happened in this case. This person got admitted and was referred to, the, to us, and shortly on the same day, he was in our interventional radiology suite for a thrombectomy, or essentially a removal of this clot. So in terms of any type of surgical management, there's only really two options. You can either you know, crack open the chest, go in and actually manually remove the clot. That rarely ever happens in a setting like this in an acute setting. It's usually people who have clot burden that's been there for a long time, their heart is starting to give out, then you can consider that type of management. But something in the acute setting, really the only options you have is to thin the blood or actually go in and remove the clot endovascularly, which means that we actually don't make huge incisions out in the chest. We don't open up the chest. Instead, what we do is we make a very small incision up in the neck and we enter into the natural vessels and we use the, your natural anatomy to be able to grab this clot. So this is the, one of the first images from there. This kind of just shows here's one of the big vessels. Here's our needle actually entering into the vessel. So we, so we use that to enter into the heart. And here, if we take a look, we got our wire in. It's, this is, and remember, in real time, this is actually going into your heart, looping around the right side of the heart. Again, this is the right side. This is the left side. This is your airway splitting here. So this is actually a wire that's into the heart, comes around, and now it has a choice. It can either go left into the left main pulmonary artery that I showed you, which had a little bit of clot, but really the main clot we wanted to get out was on the right side. So we actually had to manipulate this wire and get onto the right side. Now remember, while you're in the heart, it's very easy to cause damage, and it's also very easy to irritate the lining of the heart and cause various different arrhythmias. So this is a pretty high-risk procedure, but as long as you know, you're know you taking your time and being extra meticulous and careful, you're able to cross across the heart, and right now we're in the left main pulmonary artery, but the goal is to get into the right side. So here again, we have the wire in. It's deeper in the left main pulmonary artery. Now we're gonna have to manipulate it and get it over to the right side. Now if we take a look at this image here, we have the wire here. Again, we're gonna shoot some contrast to get a better idea of the, of the anatomy. And you can see that right now it's parked mainly in the left side and it's still filling up some because of pressure on the right side. So this is the left main pulmonary artery here. Here's the right main pulmonary artery. You can see that the left main pulmonary artery has a lot more flow into the lungs, and the right, you see these big defects here. So there's a lot of clot burden, which is exactly what we saw when we were looking at the CAT scan. So in this image here, now we see that the wire, which is the, the thinner wire here, has crossed over into the heart, across into the right main pulmonary artery. This thing is a larger catheter called the sheath, this is where the device is gonna come apart, uh, is gonna come through, and this is where we're gonna be able to actually take out a decent amount of clot. So essentially what happened here is that we were up in the right main pulmonary artery, we were able to get a decent amount of clot, but the patient started to experience chest pain, his oxygen levels started to drop, so it became unsafe for us to sort of continue the procedure. So of course we would have loved to remove majority of the clot, or all of the clot, but at that, at that point in time, we had to make a decision to stop the procedure early. It was better to remove a, a good portion of the clot and still make sure that the patient is okay instead of removing the rest. So essentially, we had to stop the procedure after that. And now the patient is still in the ICU, but doing much better. After that, his breathing became better, his blood pressure improved. And overall, you know, he, he's doing much better than he would have been if he had not come to interventional radiology. So this is a brief example of one of the, the procedures that we do. This is called a pulmonary embolism thrombectomy. So PE thrombectomy is one of the big procedures that interventional radiologists are involved in. It's a life-saving procedure, and it's one of the high-risk procedures that we do, and it's quite fascinating. So this is a quick, brief look into the world of interventional radiology. Hope you enjoyed this brief look, and until next time.